Food Heals Podcast, episode 222. So all they know when they went to beauty school is steaming and extractions. Well, extractions are going to spread bacteria. I don't like that either. Mm. I don't like steaming. I don't like half the things regular facialists do. Okay. But more and more now, they're much more educated. They've really changed. Mm -hmm. But it's really important that you go to somebody who really knows the science and knows what she's doing and knows the products and the integrity and how they react to your skin. Yep. It's so important because just somebody says they're a professional doesn't mean they are. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. Today, we are chatting with anti-aging expert Lori Hart. Lori specializes in non-surgical approaches that help women love themselves as they age. By educating women about aging in a safe, healthy, and painless way, Lori has transformed thousands of women to be their most beautiful, natural selves. Lori also is an expert in medical and oncology makeup, and she's been involved in beauty for over 35 years. And I'm so excited that our mutual friend, JJ, introduced us. I got to spend a lot of time with Lori at our Rise and Bloom Mastermind, which JJ was also a part of, and JJ is also the co-host for today. But before we get to our interview with Lori, a friend of the show, J. Rowe, also known as Jason Robel, has a brand new free course for Food Heals Nation listeners. The Good Mood Food course answers the questions, how can we use diet to support positive moods? How can we develop mindful practices that help us make better meal choices? How can food optimize our brain? You'll learn the answers to these questions and more. You can read all about it at foodhealsnation.com slash goodmoodfood, but let's let Jason tell you a little bit more about it. Roll it, Roxy. Hey, it's Jason Robel here. I'm a chef author and huge food chemistry nerd. I actually struggled with clinical depression for many years before I learned how to balance my brain chemistry and feed my feelings with the right foods and mindful eating practices. And right now, I'm sharing my favorite strategies and recipes in my new commune course, Good Mood Foods. In just 10 days, I'll take you through the specific protocols that I use to heal from clinical depression and reclaim my joy, positivity, and contentment in life. I'm going to show you what foods promote positive emotional states, talk about the key nutrients for your brain health, share effective sleep hacks and ways to eat healthy on the go, and lead you through meditations to promote more mindful eating. I am so excited to be on this journey of optimal health and contentment with you. And remember that even if you're struggling and you don't feel your best right now, you can feel good again. And I'm going to show you how. Let's do this together. So stay tuned to the end of this show because after our interview with Lori, we're going to do a quick and dirty 10 questions with Jason Robel. It was really fun. We were doing a healing kitchen shoot, more about this to come, and we just started playing a game. And so he answered all our questions and you'll get to hear a little bit more about the free series as well. If you just can't wait, you can go right now to foodhealsnation.com slash goodmoodfood and sign up for the free training. Next up, our interview with Lori. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. She's an empowerment strategist, podcast host, author, and personal trainer. She's been on the podcast many times. She organizes inspiring events around LA, like The Next Big Step and Releasing What Weighs You Down. Please welcome today's co host, JJ Flazanes. I'm happy to be here again. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Allie. So happy to have you. And today's guest is an anti-aging expert, a pioneer of mineral makeup who specializes in non-surgical approaches to help women love themselves 
as we age. Thank goodness we need it. Please welcome today's guest, Lori Hart. And I'm happy to be here too. <laughs> <laughs> We're really happy to have you. Yes. So you are just a wealth of information and knowledge. You have a center in Beverly Hills where you anti-age women. So tell us <laughs> who you are and what you do and how you can make us all beautiful naturally without all the surgery and BS out there. Okay, so first let's talk about anti-age. Okay. Who made aging bad? I know. It's such a bad terminology. So I'm about pro-aging because the alternative (laughs) is not very good. Love that. However, why not do it with grace and ease? And what I see what's happening with women specifically, and men have it too because we turn on TV and men are not looking so good either, is that we're struggling and suffering. Mm -hmm. And then between the ads on TV, and the movie stars, and the magazines, we don't know, and the department stores, we don't know what to listen to. And the Instagrams, and all of the things that make us feel less than, or not good enough. And then the voices that we have in our own head, yeah. and the stuff that we've had since childhood. Yeah. And then as you get older, it just gets worse and worse and worse, and we shrink. Now, I don't know about you, but I say before menopause, I was 4'11". I can't afford to shrink anymore. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's it would not be a pretty picture. Got ya. And as we get older, when we have wisdom and we've had journeys where we should be at our peak, we're actually having voices in our head that actually push us down. Forget about what other people tell us. The things that we tell ourselves that shrink us. And I say... We spend money on business coaches and life coaches and empowerment coaches, and we go to church, and we should do all of that. But you walk past that frickin' mirror with bad lighting, and it takes you out. And I don't care how empowered you are, you see yourself in bad lighting, and you see things that you, you make a decision about how you look, and you start changing your posture, changing the words that you say about yourself, changing your thinking, and then you think that you... You don't have the capacity to be big. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I love about getting older is that we have the wisdom. If you've done the inner work, we should have the confidence because we have so much more knowledge and wisdom. But at the end of the day, we're still taken out by the outer stuff. And there's so much more than outer. Of course, there is outer, and I'm not negating. That's important. And if anybody would have ever told me Because I grew up with two parents, that's all they cared about was the outer. Mm -hmm. I would have never thought that I'd be in the beauty business. But it's so needed. Yes. And now, you know, it's one thing if you start putting poison in your body at 40. Mm -hmm. But now people are starting at 20. I know. They think that they need Botox and all of those injectables to look beautiful. And I'm like, God, when I was 20, I was fucking gorgeous, but I couldn't even recognize it. I couldn't even understand it. <laughs> I know, and it's so sad. Yeah, but we're all gorgeous at any age. And I think that's also part of the problem is that we think there is like, society says, as soon as you get over 30, over 40, over 50, you're, you're getting uglier and uglier, which I could not disagree more with but I also buy into it like I'm a consumer of it at the same time as I reject it and I think a lot of Food Heals Nation listeners are because we want to age naturally and gracefully we still want to look good we want to work on our inner selves but we also understand that beauty is not everything on the outside so like talk to us what can we do to just feel our best look our best feel our best be our confident amazing selves well, there are treatments, which I do, and yes. I'm an addict, okay? <laughs> and I've always got the newest, biggest, greatest, best thing, but my whole angle, so as a celebrity makeup artist, I also bought into it. So I was a short, fat, dumpy Jewish girl, mm-hmm. felt really insecure. I heard a guy once say, I know, Lori, she's the girl who never got her adult teeth. Mm. And my teeth were my nemesis and my stomach. Mm -hmm. And I was working in the movies, and here I am now working in Playboy, where I'm with some of the most magnificent women on the planet, Mm -hmm. who, by the way, are as insecure of the rest of us, which is hard (laughs) to believe. And most of them look better because of the lighting. Mm -hmm. And they talked me into liposuction. Wow. And that was horrifying because... How old were you? I was in my 20s. I woke up, throwing my guts up, I touched my face, Mm. and I said, oh my God, thank God I never touched my face. Wow. I'm going to change the way 
women see themselves as they age. And, and what, that was the start for me. So after you did the liposuction? I woke up. I, I didn't know right then, but I ended up getting a disease called gastroparesis, which is paralysis of the stomach muscles mm. as a result of cutting through all the meridians. Oh, my so God. So your body heals. The one thing about your body is that it's great. It can heal itself right. to a certain extent. But when we do things to ourselves... I know a woman who has to be on antibiotics for the rest of her life because hmm. she had fillers seven years ago. And although they left her face, the microscopic filaments that were still there, seven years later, she got a lung infection. Oh. And the infection encapsulated around those fillers. And now she looks like a baboon. And there's nothing she can do about it. Oh my so God. she's on antibiotics every day for the rest of her life. And that's destructive to the immune system as a whole. Oh, my God. You don't know what your body's, how your body's going to react. Right. So what I do is like, I should be as conscious what I do to my body as what I do to my face. But for face and body, it's like going to the gym. Mm -hmm. So I tighten the muscles and I tighten the skin. And I penetrate products that are good, safe, and healthy. And what makes me really different than other people is other people's way of accessing that glowy doing skin is by sanding, thinning, peeling, acids, chemicals, mm. all to exfoliate. And we're taught exfoliate, exfoliate, exfoliate. Right. But if you exfoliate that much, what are you you're gonna get to the bone? I mean, only kidding, but I mean, really? No, we actually, it's interesting. We talked about this on another podcast because I don't know that much about exfoliation, but I've been told it's good and it fe it sounds good. Exfoliate, break off the dead skin cells, etc. cetera. But um, she said that her daughter had was exfoliating so much that it was creating acne on the skin and there was no dietary thing that she could do. There was nothing else that she could do until she stopped it a massively exfoliating and that the acne went away. So you never know what you're causing when you're doing these things without education or leadership or guidance from someone like you. So what's also happening when you're exfoliating that much, so then you, so imagine a bad sunburn. We've all had a bad sunburn where the skin, um, I know me, I ended up in a hospital once from a bad sunburn because mm -hmm. my mother was an addict. We did baby oil, iodine, and a reflector. In fact, I just recently posted on Facebook, the new Gucci ad is a woman that's in her 60s that looks like 160. Wow. She's all brown and wrinkled and like leather, leathery, leathery leather with yeah. these big, gorgeous Gucci sunglasses. But we were all, and I ended up in the hospital with Ugh. second and third degree burns wow. from the sun. And so when you're burnt, and we've all, we've peeled, and of course we all peel the peeling skin, and it's fun, <laughs> but you're exposing that skin that isn't really ready to see light or sun. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually prematurely aging your skin, and you're doing that with things like chemicals, and acids and scrubs. So the scrubs that we're using are actually clogging landfill. That's kind of scary. So if it's what? bad for the environment, yeah, you can imagine what, how it's, ch you don't see it. It's microscopic sanding. Mm. It's actually changing the texture of your skin. So you're really aging yourself much faster than you have to. And so I know that you say there's a d big difference between sunscreen and sunblock. And I am absolutely a, a promoter of the fact that the sun is good for you we need vitamin d but at the same time we have to protect ourselves but in a safe way not in a toxic way so what is the difference and what should we be putting on our bodies to protect okay. ourselves but still be healthy and not put toxic chemicals in so we we actually need 20 minutes of vitamin d daily without sunscreen or sunblock and that's actually recently been proven that your eyes need 20 minutes of sun light. So take without, off the sunglasses. Without sunglasses. Gotcha. However, the most important thing, you don't want to do it in prime hours. So like between 12 and 3 when the sun, 11 and 3 when the sun is the hottest. So you want to be smart. Gotcha. But like I drive to work without sunglasses and sunblock. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to get some sun. And even still, I just had a blood test. I have no vitamin D. Hmm. So even as much as I still go out in the sun, you, your body gets older and it stops working on its own as well. And you have to supplement with healthy things. That being said, sunscreen is anything you can pronounce. Those big O words and those weird things that have all those many monosyllables. Uh -huh. Okay, so what is good is zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Period. Okay. You don't want anything over a 50. First of all, the difference between a 30 and a 50 is only 4%. Okay. And it's, a, it's not 20. 
No, it's yeah. four. Mm-hmm. So, and that only means that you're getting protection for a certain amount of time. So if you're not reapplying it every two hours, you're not protected. The only thing that contradicts that, and I'm happy to say, is my mineral makeup. It's zinc oxide. Okay, well tell us about the mineral makeup. JJ is holding it in her hand. This was specially formulated for me. Lori customized this for me, so I have my mineral makeup, which is my sunblock. And you can be in the sun all day, And not worry about getting sun damage. So tell us about the mineral makeup. What is in it? What is different? Can you customize it for anyone? I can customize it. So the benefit for me is because I started out as a portrait artist and a makeup artist, I look at your skin. And and you don't have to have it customized. My product has such high integrity and has so much zinc oxide. That's the key ingredient in sunblock. But mine has no additives, no fillers. It has crushed rocks and gemstones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can add additives. So if you need brighteners for under your eyes, I can make one f- with add brighteners. If you need more hydration, I have different powders that I can customize. If your skin needs balancing because you break out. And actually, people that break out, mineral sunblock is great. But you have to be careful. There is integrity in product, and there is some. There are still mineral products that have parabens in it, which I and fr- I mean it's horrifying because it yeah. completely cancels out. You really have to know what you're putting on your skin because your skin absorbs everything. Okay, you guys, let's talk about this. So, mineral is a buzzword, but what does it really mean? And can anyone put mineral on their product and it can still be toxic? Absolutely, because the other stuff and the carriers and some of the doctors put some of the toxic ingredients. So the higher up on the label is more product, Mm -hmm. okay? And some of the top doctors in the world put their parabens and their fragrance high up. because And so then you don't even get any of the benefit of the healthy ingredients because they're at the very bottom. Right. It just blows me away. Why put them in if they can't? Like even things that, like beeswax. If you're going to have a wax or an oil, nothing can penetrate past that. And what are minerals and why are they good for our skin? They're zinc oxide. They're just crushed rocks and gemstones. So for mine specifically, you have the frequency of the gemstones, which is wonderful. Yeah. So we use peridot and tourmaline. But rocks are just basically ground up rocks, but it's how they're micronized and milled. Mm. And so... If they're not finely tuned, they also can scratch your face. And then if you go by some of the ones that you know over the counter, they're not finely milled, and then they end up looking powdery, and you look dry. A lot of times people say, I don't like minerals because they think powder, it's drying. Well, it's not drying. They're dry. Mm -hmm. So I, what I do is I put a primer on, but I put it on over the minerals. Oh, I brought that too. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, what else do I have in my bag from Lori? Oh, yeah, I've got the primer, and which I love. And they feel amazing. It feels like silk. And they you could put them on, you could put them on under, but when I put them on over, it makes your skin look so luminous. But then here's the other problem. So people are, are now trading contouring. So they're giving up their orange stripes. Okay, I barely know what contouring is, you guys. Okay, so where you're <laughs> using a dark, like a bronzer, okay. which are so, some of these bronzers are so orange, you look like a freak. Okay, okay you have you. these stripes and to, con- to contour. So if you want to shade your nose, if you think your nose is too big, or you want to shade your jawline to give you more. So gotcha. if you think of the science, of the Italian arts, coming from Italy. It's Uh the Italian art of chiaroscuro. It's the contrast of highlighting versus shadowing. Okay. So when you want something to look bigger, you highlight. Now they call highlighting strobing. Okay. It's just (laughs) a new word. (laughs) But now what's happening when you turn on Instagram and TV, you're getting these silver shadows on the cheekbones. People are looking like an oil slick. Okay. (laughs) Okay. They look horrible. It's just, I just want to take a sponge and, or, a I want to watch TV with you and see your <laughs> Oh, my God, I go crazy. The good thing that's happening now to bring up a celebrity is Kylie Jenner, mm-hmm. since she's had her baby, has declared that she's no longer doing fillers. Yay. And that wow. makes me so happy because she's such an important icon in today's world. And now she has her own 
makeup yeah. line. I don't know about her ingredients, but she's such she's, she's really taken the storm. Yeah. So the fact that she's since she's had her baby and more focused on health yeah. and, and mommy, she's not doing it anymore. So I'm hoping that that will open up the eyes to the youth to leave themselves alone because Bad face work. Look, a doctor is a doctor. He's yeah. not an artist. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to look like trout mouth. Well, let's talk about fillers because on this podcast, we've also been told that there are some fillers that are natural and okay. And I don't know. And I'm scared of it all. <laughs> can I Can I yes, address? Because only because I this is how I got to Lori. So there was a, a friend who I reached out to who I knew was sort of older than she looked, so to speak, and she, uh-huh. t- she took good care of her face. And I asked her, because I was looking at like preventative, like, okay, I, yeah. I want to start making sure just because obviously I do it for my body and my bones, right? And you want to keep your skin tight and your muscles tight and your body tight, you work them out. So I understood that I needed to get ahead of it. And I asked her what she was doing. And she gave me two referrals. One was someone who did her Botox, who also <laughs> could do Juvederm which I did try and the other one was Lori and she said this woman does all natural stuff which of course I met with Lori at the same time too and I've been working with Lori ever since because just like you I don't want to put toxic chemicals in my body and I've never ever 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 wanted to do Botox and I never ever ever will unless there's some medical reason in another part of my body that I need to use it for some some reason that I can buy into but as of right now my face is not getting poison in it. Exactly. Um, because and it goes through your whole body. It goes through your whole body. Yeah. Right. Um, so there have been little reasons why there uh, there are some positive uses of it. That's why I said that, like in the physical headache, therapy. Eh? Uh, no, in physical therapy. And yeah. So there are very, very few reasons, but just so that I don't say something I'm going to regret later. But I didn't want to use anything like Botox. I didn't want to have a, like, think about surgery. I knew that if I can do it for my body, I could do it for my face. Yeah. And the only reason why I did try the filler was because I thought, okay, Juvederm is, you know, re- is what is the? Restylane. Restylane, right. So in your body does make it. And so it was kind of like the most natural thing to do. However, I did know that once I started it, if I liked it, you have to keep it up because your body will get rid of it. And so I knew it wasn't a long-term strategy, but I thought, okay, I'll try this once. That's a little bit good just to say that your body will detox it out. So it's not a permanent problem like silicone. Yeah. Oh, we can talk about that. Right. So I, I had it done and uh, you know, and I was looking at different areas, but I'll tell you, besides the fact that I was armed with arnica, both topically and taking it so that I wouldn't bruise. So arnica is something to help with bruising and and after. Trauma I mean, literally, to the body. like once she was on, I took and I was really, really conservative. I used one vial uh-huh. on both sides, and and honestly, I didn't. I didn't see that big of a difference. I mean, it was a little bit, and it was a little bit uneven. But then I, I swell, I was like swelling, like mm. one. My eye got puffy oh on one side, and I called her, and I was like, "Oh my god, my body's reacting to this." It didn't. Again, it was one of those. Okay, I tried it. I'll never do it again. Okay, now I know. Just because I was just curious as sure. to, you know, if it lasts for four months, that could be a good thing. But just as Lori was talking, it's you know what I believe in in terms of your body. You're not going to get to sixty never working out for you know 20 years and think you're going to have strong muscles right. and and, t- and tight firm skin because of the the fat on top and the lack of muscle tone underneath so same thing with your face which is why i sought Lori out and have been working with her ever since because all of her stuff is a, the exact same thing a personal trainer does for their body mm. to their face amazing preventatively my face feels like a trampoline body not so much <laughs> <laughs> which is why we work with each other exactly <laughs> Yes, so you help with the body, she helps with the face. I get and the it. thing is, <laughs> JJ's work is really good, and then I do body treatments. So the, the areas that are hard to, like I have a woman coming now, and she's this teeny little thing. Oh, my God, she's so thin. Mm-hmm. She doesn't like as her skin's getting older, and she's in fit, but the skin on her legs, is, she's starting to get wrinkled. Now, for me, I don't look at myself that much naked. I don't see all the hag- s- sagging. But the things that people notice, I-, I can't believe that they get obsessed. But there are ways naturally, safely, healthy that will help your body work better on its own mm-hmm. that are not toxic. So what are some things that we can do through you or at home? Okay, so let's talk about one of my pet peeves. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Most people at night sleep in their makeup or a lot yeah 
Present company included. <laughs> so I told her that I had my makeup done yesterday and I slept in it so I, it would last a day. But normally I don't. No, I'm only kidding. Yeah. So no, e- but it's true. No, it's true. So for every day that you sleep in your makeup, you age 13 days. Oh my God. <laughs> it's okay. She'll get you back. I'll get you back. She'll get you back. So just something that's food for thought. <laughs> but you know, we're always in a hurry and we spend so much money on skincare. Yeah. But we throw a little cleanser on and we go... And take a cloth and we're very, I, I see women, they're tearing their face up. So our skin is delicate. It's very strong, but it's very delicate. So you want to, the most important part of your regime is cleansing your face. Yeah. You want your skin to breathe. So there, I have different cleansing devices that you can use at home. Now, one of the things that I'm sure everybody uses, or a lot of people use, is a cleansing brush that uses ultrasound. So in theory, ultrasound is great because it cleans your skin not only on the surface but on a cellular level and it pulls out blackheads and whiteheads and crap that you don't want. Yeah. However, when you put the brush aside, like your toothbrush, it's sitting there wet and picking up all kinds of gunk, bacteria and mold, and then the next day you go and wash your face. So... One of the things that I have is a product that uses ultrasound, but it has no brush. Mm -hmm. And it has five different settings. So not only does it clean your face, it thermally heats up the tissue so it pulls out the same bacteria and things that you don't want. Your skin can breathe. But the other settings make all your products work better. Because I say skin care gets in deep enough to create problems with your endocrine system and your hormone system but not really deep enough to get the actives to work. So you really want, if you're spending money on skincare, you want them to work. So really, you want to really cleanse your face. Mm -hmm. But be gentle. When you're touching your face, first of all, hardly touch your face. Really, if I tell you, the only times I will slap a client... (laughs) And gently. I've never been slapped. This is good. Good news for me. Is when I'm working on her face and then she'll take her dirty fingers and start touching her face after I've totally exposed all the the clean skin. Okay. Okay. So you want to really just be, I'm joking, but I'm serious. Okay. You want to be mindful that your face is strong. But it's also delicate and sensitive. Sure. So when you are going to touch your face, especially around your eyes, don't rub your eyes. Okay, why do you think people are getting dark circles and and sagging? It's because of all of this. And if you're putting eyeliner, you're doing this all day long when you put your makeup on. Your eyes have no oil glands. So if you're going to touch your face and put on eyeliner, first of all, I use a brush and an eyeshadow. And I wet the outside corner so that you're... I never use pencils. Ever, ever, ever. Because Because pencils make you pull. So you're pulling. You want to get that line. You're doing this every single day. I don't use... I use liquid. Uh, I don't use pencils either. Good girl. Yeah. And then if you are going to use your fingers on your face, only use your ring finger. If you move your hands around, you notice you have no strength in that finger. Yep. Oh, that's a good point. Isn't that weird? Okay. (laughs) Why is that? That's weird. I don't know. Isn't weird. That, weird? <laughs> that is so you weird. you want to just really kind of pat, not rub. Yeah, okay. Especially around your eyes. So that's really important. So then I have another device that you can use at home that I use. And it's actually affordable. My first device of its kind was $3,500. And they've come down what? to under $200. And it's a blade okay. that you use to... Also ultrasound, it will, it's like ultrasonic microdermabrasion. You can use this little blade to get off all the microscopic grime. And the reason I like devices to clean rather than your hands, you're not going to hurt yourself where you could really do more damage with your hands. Okay. And you're going to be really much more thorough if you're using a device that's going deeper than even just topical cleansers are going to go. So this blade will not only clean the surface of your skin, 
It will give you a facelift at the same time. Ooh. See, I'm going in on Saturday. My next appointment is in two days from now. Or, yeah, two days from now. Oh, and we, I've had the blade. I've also had that other device that you've talked about. So what else? Have, and, and they're fabulous. I definitely recommend anyone who wants to have your face lifted in a non-surgical way. You know, we have muscles underneath the skin. And so keeping those plump, that's how to be anti-wrinkle without doing any kind of stupid cutting and injecting and things with poison and and things that you don't need. So, Lori, can, I know you were talking about devices, but what else do people so, are people doing that they shouldn't be doing? Yeah. Okay, so ingredients are some of my... So you want to make sure... I know we all love lather and sudsing, but you want to make sure that your products have safe ingredients because your body is absorbing the stuff that's toxic. Yeah. Okay, so something to avoid is sodium lauryl sulfate. Yeah. Not only on your skin, but in your hair products. I know it's a pain in the neck to not have your... You don't sometimes feel that you're as clean. No, I've gotten used to it now. So my shampoo does not, you know, uh, make... Lather. Lather. It, it's so interesting. So now if I'm like randomly at a hotel or something, I don't have my regular shampoo. It lathers up so quick, like in this bubbly mess. I'm like, oh my God. Like I'm not used to this, but this is how it is normally. Right. I mean, the good news is... People are much more conscious now. Yeah. So more and more. But there are still times I'll go and get my hair done someplace and I'll have to say, are you using a shampoo with no sulfates? Mm -hmm. Oh, you want one of those? Yeah. But more and more, really, people yeah. are much more conscious of those. And you want to make sure that it's using healthy preservatives because your body maintains a lot of... It stays in your system for long periods of time. And you remember... You're doing this stuff daily, twice a day. So you're compounding negative results. Mm -hmm. And over time, your body's going to fight it. And the thing is, is that a lot of people that argue against this say, well, the body is naturally able to detox itself. And so therefore, if I use a couple of chemicals, my body is going to detox it out. So it's no big deal. But the point is, is that it's an overload of toxins that we are exposed to on a daily basis between environmental factors that are out of control, plus lifestyle choices that we're making, plus God knows who else, you know, the food that we think is organic or we think is non-toxic or we think is local, it could not be. If we're eating processed food, if we're eating fast food, all of this builds up. And so, you know, um, there are certain doctors like Dr. Stephen Cabral who talks about the rain barrel effect. And once you're overloaded, your body cannot detox. It can. It cannot fight back. And that is when chronic disease starts to occur. So this is about beauty. This is why you're here. But the truth is, this is about health. Health. Internal it's all about health. health. Internal health, internal beauty, so that we can then be radiantly beauty on the out, beautiful on the outside as well. So important that you said that. Just because we age doesn't mean we have to be okay with wrinkles. That's the point. That is why I wanted to find Lori in the first place. Mm -hmm. It's that proactive, like, I want to make sure I keep my skin tight, the muscles underneath my skin. I want to make sure I keep enough moisture and fluids and whatever else I need to make sure my face doesn't, you know, decrease and droop mm -hmm. and wrinkle, but doesn't get to the place where it's it looks like I've aged when it doesn't have to. Not that I'm saying that a wrinkle here or two, you know, is okay or not okay. I think growing old gracefully and embracing that, of course your body's going to change. But if you're laying out in the sun and you're not using any kind of sunblock and you're putting chemicals in your face and all of a sudden you wake up. I mean, I have clients who are in their 60s whose skin is so thin that it breaks all the time. It is paper thin. It's super wrinkly. And it's, I mean, they're constantly bleeding because of their mm -hmm. not being in the sun for so long. And imagine, you know, your face. You're going to look like a, a leather face. Yeah. So your products and your treatments are definitely what I would love everyone to be knowing about and doing because it's how we stay healthy and stay beautiful naturally. And the thing is, you brought up a really important point. I had a client come in and I saw her on a Facebook Live and she's a skincare expert. And she said, now ladies, we want to exfoliate every day. So let's talk about exfoliation. Mm -hmm. So you want to microscopically get off the skin that's ready to come off. As you, your skin will naturally turn over, depending on how old you are, every 28 days or sometimes longer. You do want to get the dead skin off, but at what cost? Right. So what makes me really different is, first of all, I'm dead set against anything that will take off more than just the excess dry skin. Now, dry and tight 
are, they feel similar. Clients will call me up and say, my face feels dry after I've done a tightening treatment. Mm. Your face is tight. It's not dry. (laughs) You're not used to your face feeling tight like going to the gym. But everybody, when I took this woman's makeup off, I was horrified. Not only did she have broken capillaries, she had blue veins on her face. What causes that? Over exfoliation. Got it. Okay. And what makes me really different is I don't focus on a lot of exfoliation. Over exfoliation will thin your skin, will make your skin sensitive. It will create broken capillaries. It will create spider veins. You can bruise. So what should we do? So there are <laughs> products that are gentle, yeah. but if it has a scrub or feels some kind of like there's a, like a funny texture, first of all, the fact that you know that it clogs the landfill, I don't want to use it on my face. Right. Okay. So, but, and then microdermabrasion, it uses either aluminum, which is toxic, or diamonds, and that will also scratch your face. But the thing I dislike about microdermabrasion the most is that it uses suction, and that suction will, I mean, it feels good, sucks your skin. Mm-hmm. But think of a chicken and the yellow membrane. It will, over time, because most people, and I'm a more is better girl, so, not, you know, if I like something, I'm a more is better girl. Yeah. But over suction, and now people are buying home microdermabrasion and doing, you know, their face, and now, now they're doing, which is better, they're doing this thing like a dermophile with like a little teeny, um, looks like a, a long handle with a round thing and it's diamonds and they're, so they're buffing their face off all that buffing you're not going to have any face left within reason not very often you know be mindful don't overdo check with Lori. yeah be, call Lori. be safe check and i'm always available by phone call so <laughs> um i actually have a device that exfoliates that uses baking soda which it Amazing. took me took me 29 years. I, I finally gave in. I bought a steamer. And I, 29 years I was in business. I finally said, okay, people want steam. But steam also, it feels good and done in moderation. It's good. But it's drying. It pulls out all the impurities. But you're left. That's why they say drink a lot of water. So with steam and exfoliation, you're actually depleting your body of the natural minerals. Got and you. very few people, maybe people, your audience, are more conscious, so they're drinking water more. But as we age, and I, I really want to address anti-aging. I'm pro-aging. Yeah. Okay, so yes, I'm an anti-aging expert, but I love aging. I would never go back to being younger. I was horrified by what I look like. <laughs> you know, I'm so much happier being in my 60s yeah. than I ever would be. But I'm conscious and do I mess up? Sure. Sure. But let's think. Look, what is the one, one of the most inflammatory things that you could put in your body? Sugar. Okay. Correct? Yep. And what are people using? Sugar scrubs. Sugar scrubs. That has been a thing for me because I'm like, okay, when you put something on your skin, it immediately absorbs. So if we're doing a sugar scrub, isn't that immediately putting sugar in our body? Yes. And I've never had a clear answer on that. So thank you, Lori. (laughs) And glycolic acid is sugar cane. Got it. So we don't want to put that stuff on our skin. So So, I feel like we've done a lot about what we should not do. We've heard all of these things. We're all trying these things. More, more, more. There's more no's. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. There's, you know, because you don't want anything that's going to peel your face like retinols. I was watching one of the talk shows and one of the top skincare experts who looks like who did it and ran, she was scarier face, with the Botox and the fillers, is recommending retinols and glycolics and chemical peels and her face does not look good. Mm, Okay. So you want to make sure, first of all, retinols are good if, okay, so now our body makes an ingredient called retinaldehyde. That's a derivative. So every, there are things that are good. And so a vi- vitamin A, retinol is a vitamin A. Okay. Vitamin A is good for you if it's in the right form. So if your body's making retinaldehyde and you're putting retinaldehyde on your face, it uses an ingredient called phosphatidylcholine. will get the retinol down to the dermis, which is down deep. Okay. Surfacely. It will create pigmentation like you've never believed. Okay. And if you see people that look like a polished apple, that's what that will do. A polished apple. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Not pretty. Not pretty. 
So yes, ingredients are good. Not all ingredients are bad. Vitamin C is one of the best yes. anti-aging ingredients. However, you buy a bottle of vitamin C, and if it doesn't last, you've spent $150, and when three weeks it turns bad and you've thrown it out. I have a device from Japan where you're electrically charging. Say, what I keep stressing is using ingredients that get into your skin, and if they don't get in, so I have a machine from Japan. It's a little pricey, but over time it's it's pretty affordable. And it electrically charges the vitamin C, mm, so it goes into the dermis. Okay. So even people that are sensitive to vitamin C, because it's going in down to the deep layers, they probably won't have a reaction. So is this a treatment that you do on clients, or is this something we can do at home, or both? both? Okay. Both. both. <laughs> awesome. So vitamin C is good. Vitamin A is good. Stay away from the acid. Stay away from the peels. And my focus is to teach you how to thicken your skin. Mm, okay. And to also get your body to turn itself back on so it stays young and active. Because if you go to a department store and you go to doctors, I hate to put anybody down. Doctors don't know. Okay, so one of the treatments I do is radio frequency. Okay. But radio frequency, when you go to a doctor, first of all, you'll pay $2,500 to $3,500 a treatment. So I'm ch- way cheaper than that. Yeah. Like... <laughs> It, no, way cheaper. They will thermally heat up your skin so high that a friend of mine was given two silicone breast implants to hold for pain. What? And she ruptured them both. Why? Why were they? First of all, why were they giving her those instead of like some kind of tension ball? Because they, cause she wouldn't. She was more conscious. Hello, Ugh. and she didn't want to be. They. A lot of them will put you out or give you some kind of twilight. Okay. Because it hurts. So if they have to put you out, no. they're causing so much trauma, right? That they're burning your face. Yeah. And they will burn all the deep layers. So you may have some short term gain, Mm-mm. but over time, your face is going to collapse because you burned all the proteins in your skin. Ugh. I'd rather go slower. It might take a little longer, but you see results each and every time. Yeah. All right. So if we are listening right now, we want to buy this. Where can we buy it? Buy which? Sorry, the vitamin C thing. <laughs> oh, well, first of all, we have to, I, I would recommend because I not everybody is for everything. Yeah. So I would love to offer a Skype conversation so I could see what your regime is. And the products that you're using, because if they're good, I'm honest. I want you to, I don't want you to throw your money away. Right. But if they're bad, I'm going to tell you, and then you make your own decision. And so is that how, what you guys said? How was your initial consultation? Well, because we both live in LA, I showed up at her house and she, at her office, one of her offices, she's got a couple and, uh, but it looks like a house. It's not, um, (laughs) because she has all these different rooms and all these different machines and couches and it's very comfortable. And I went in and she looked at my face and then we did a treatment. I mean, I've been seeing Lori off and on now for over a year and more regularly recently, I definitely took some hiatus in there because it does take a little bit of time, but I'm getting some of the products to use at home and doing what she tells me and it's, you know, you can do it remotely, especially because she has all these products. Like every time she uses a new product, I want, oh, I want that one. I want that one. Yeah. I want that one. I want that one. <laughs> because they, they work and to do it more consistently is better. So, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a money whore. I'm sorry. You know, I want to save you money. And also I don't want to go put you into a healing crisis. I want to start slow mm-hmm. and see what works and have you trust me, first of all, and be happy and say, okay, now what can I do? Right. Because I, I was at a class last week where an esthetician said, I'm selling these clients eight products. First of all, that'll break the bank. Yeah. Who needs, how do you know that everyone's going to need eight products? Right, exactly. And she said, well, if they take up your prime real estate and they don't follow your protocol, then fire them as clients. She's out for the money. Mm. And that's all she cares about. I care about you. Yeah. I say the minute the money becomes more important than helping you is when it's time to go to another career. Oh, we appreciate that. Nothing about you. makes me happier when I show a client a mirror. Yeah. And and a lot of times at the beginning we'll do half your face. Mm-hmm. So you we'll, can we'll, see. Well, when I first had it done to me, I didn't I was young. I didn't know from good side of my face beds. But you know, at a certain age we all know, okay, this is my good side. Especially right. <laughs> now with Facebook lives. Are you getting my good side? No double chins, you know, you know what you don't <laughs> like, okay? So let's start with the worst side. Yeah. If I can make your worst side first of all, everybody's face is asymmetrical. Okay. It's 
Oh, nobody's faces even. I could count on one hand how many people's faces are even close. They're not. Mm -hmm. And it was funny. I just had my face read by this woman, and she told me I had Santa Claus cheeks. I cracked up. (laughs) (laughs) What does it mean to have your face read, by the way? So she tells you why, like your nostrils up on this side, and and each. It was really fascinating. Like things that have happened in your life or something. Yeah, Yeah, it was really interesting. But she told me I had Santa Claus cheeks. You know, and what you know, what this is the masculine side. This is the fan. This is your professional. This is your pro. It was actually very fascinating. But let's. I want to have a conversation with you. And what J.D. didn't, we, we talked about when she first came in, the products that she was using. And I made sure that the stuff that she was using was good for her and safe and effective. Because just because something is clean doesn't mean it's active or going to do anything. So you want your products to work, don't you? Food Heals Nation, we have to tell you about a product we are obsessed with. You've heard us talk about it before. We had Daisy on the podcast. We love Banish. We love her story of growing up with acne and scarring since third grade. And after trying product after product, she discovered certain ingredients found in most skincare made her skin worse. And a lot of the products she used contained fragrance, dyes, and silicones, which aggravated her skin condition. So she worked together with a chemist friend to make skincare without those harsh ingredients. And it worked. She now has glowing skin. She's a Food Heals <laughs> regular around here because everyone is obsessed with her and everyone that's tried her products are raving about them. So we're super excited. She now has glowing skin and she's always asked, what is her secret? The core product is the Banish Kit, which comes with the Banisher. That sounds like so cartoony. I love it. I and know. The, it's like a movie. <laughs> and the, the Banisher. Ban- the Banisher. <laughs> and the Banish Oil Vitamin C Serum. Food Deals Nation, you know how I feel about vitamin C. You got to get your vitamin C in your body and on your skin. The yes. Banisher works by creating micro wounds into the skin. Sounds gross, but I've done it. It works. Into the skin in a controlled manner to cause skin to renew itself because the skin thinks it's injured, which it actually is. You're putting these tiny little holes on a micro level and then the skin actually goes to repair itself. It also greatly increases the absorption of the skincare products you apply right after using it. Yeah. And I just love the kit. And, you know, it is needles. But like I said on the podcast episode, it is not harsh. You do not feel it. If anything, it's just like a light massage. Like, don't worry about that. It is very renewing and healing to the skin. And there's no side effects. Your face doesn't like start peeling or turning red. Like if you went and did one of those like really intense, harsh facials. My skin turned red, but that's okay because that means you're bringing blood to the skin, which is good. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's a temporary red. It's not. It's a temporary red. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've done those um, really hardcore facials in the past where your your skin is peeling for days. And I'll never do any of those again, but that has been my experience. So I just want to assure Food Heals Nation that, yeah, even if you're red, it's not going to last. It's temporary. And I just feel like that means, you know, it's working. Plus the vitamin C you put on after. I mean, it's perfect. I think, you know, this country is very deficient in vitamin C. I think it should be in everything. My grandfather took so much of it. He reversed the arthritis in his spine. He lived to 99 and his skin was gorgeous. The man didn't have any wrinkles. He, I think, took more than his body needed and he megadosed, which they was a yes. thing they did in the 70s. But I love me some vitamin C and your skin will love it too. Yes, I agree. And I've been mega dosing on vitamin C internally. And now that I've been using the vitamin C serum, I really do see a, a result. Like I think I am banishing my wrinkles because I put vitamin C on my face religiously now. And I didn't used to do that. And I think that it's made such a difference. So the products are made fresh to order. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. Go to banish.com. Use the code food heals nation for $10 off your first order for a limited time. You are listening to the Food Hills Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. I saw you on ABC, and on ABC, you said that you were not a fan of lasers. And the reason I want to talk about this is because lasers are what got rid of my sun damage. So I've always been a fan, but at the same time, I don't use them anymore now that they serve their purpose. But I heard you say that you weren't a fan because it was like new skin being exposed. And I want to talk about that because I don't want to promote something that's not good, but I know it worked for me in the t- in a temporary state. So what are your thoughts? Okay. So how many times did you do it? Um, I don't remember exactly. I would say four to five. Okay. So again, that's 
cutting with light. Okay. So laser will burn off the top layers of your skin. Yes. So if you're really a fanatic and the spots really bother you. They were very, very dark. I don't, I did, like how I look now is not how I looked. They were very dark. Like I'm a fan of freckles. Freckles are adorable. But these were dark, splotchy sunspots all across my cheeks. Okay. And how many years ago did you do it? Uh, at least... Six. Okay. It's been a while now. Okay. So, and are you more conscious of now making sure that your skin is protected in the sun? Yes. I wear a hat. I wear non-toxic organic sunscreen. Um, my face does not see the sun basically at all. <laughs> even if I'm at a pool party, my face is covered up even if my body is exposed. So do you remember how burnt you were after the laser? How red and raw your yes. skin was? Yes. Okay. So that's burning your face. Yes. So... You were younger. Yes. And your face, your body had more of an ability to heal itself. Got it. Yes. So over time, so if you do something again, a little bit, it's still burning your face. Okay. It's still thinning your skin. Okay. But you were younger. Yeah. And your body had more of an ability to heal and grow your own skin back. Yes. And so it did its job. But what's happening is people are doing it later in life where they don't have the ability. To bounce back. To bounce back. Okay. And then you're dealing with doctors who just, they're just burning your face. And then a lot of times people do not protect their skin. They're back out in the sun. Yes, and I know that was a big part of it. I will say I'm good for the doctors who worked with me because they said, you cannot go in the sun anymore once you do these treatments. And therefore, I don't unless I'm extremely protected and under a hat. So they did tell me that. But I do feel like sometimes these industries are promoted, like come back every few months to maintain this. And I think it was a cure that worked and I don't need to go back. It did work, and it does work. But first of all, I love freckles, too. Yeah, they're adorable. Um, They're adorable. (laughs) You know, I I had them. Yeah. Um, And I used, look, I used acids, too. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first got glycolic acid and the first peel, I let that peel sit in my cabinet for nine months. I was so scared to Mm. using it. And then I got trained to do a more invasive peel, and then it started itching. And I started itching, and then I thought, you know, we love to peel that skin, Mm -hmm. microscopic or otherwise. And I said, if I peel that skin and I scar, it's over for me. Mm, yeah. So you don't want scarring. You know, you can scar. And you had a good experience. There are people that get scarred. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of times, lasers will, if you don't have the right skin color, mm-hmm. your skin will overpigment. Mm. So it's really important. And so I'll give you an example. I have a friend of mine who's in San Diego, and she's a skin expert. I you say that like in quotes, in quotes. Loosely. Okay. okay, very loosely. She goes, "How come I don't get the results that you get?" Mm. I said, "So I'll say, well, what do you do here? Do you do this or you do this?" And she, I said, "You know what? These are toys for you. Mm-hmm. You just know how to use them. You don't know why you're using them. You don't know the short term benefit. You don't know the long term mm-hmm. down. You don't know the damage. They're just toys." Right. These are not toys. I recently went and had my face done by someone else because although I do my own face, you know, it's nice to be pampered. I like to be pampered too. And I could not believe, one, they did not wash my face, which is, I, I couldn't believe. Right. That's absurd. <laughs> like I'm going to be out in the element and you're going to do an invasive treatment, electrical stream where you're penetrating ingredients. The other thing is they went over my thyroid. Now, once is not going to kill me. But over time, if you're doing stuff over time, you're stopping the integrity of your body and your skin from working. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to go to somebody, and I highly recommend that you go to a professional, really vet them out. Yeah. Know what their training is. Know that they know what they're doing. Can we talk about the repairing of the body and of the skin and the role of collagen in that? Can we talk about collagen since it's a huge thing for helping for skin and what you recommend for collagen use? So as we age and the more unhealthy we get, the less collagen we have. So it's good to take a collagen supplement that works. That being said, Women are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on products that say collagen. The molecule in collagen topically is too big. It will not do any good. There are so many great vegan products. I have a line of, of 
like right now, stem cells are a big buzz. Yeah, but, you know, interesting. But there are great. I have some great plant-based stem cells and growth factors. I, I'm an animal advocate. Yeah, I, I know. I, I love animals. I don't want any. You know. So there's, and I was really against them for a long time ago. You know, our body's not a plant. Our body's not a fruit. You know, but we do get benefit mm-hmm. from using plant-based products. First of all, you get the chlorophyll in the product yeah. and there's such great vegan products out there right now so plants can build our skin as oh, well absolutely absolutely and you're again you're using the products to help your body do the work it's the product is just assisting your body to get there so like you said earlier some of these collagen products are kind of bs how do we know the difference again who do you get them from yeah and like Lori said, you don't put collagen on your skin. It's something you have to ingest. Yeah. Right. So this is something you can take as a supplement or put so, in a smoothie. I mean, it doesn't really right. taste so, good, the ones I, I've had. But. I, I, found, I found one on, on Facebook that's a supplement. I have one that's a powder that I mix in a shake. Yeah. That's all natural and safe. If you go to a holistic doctor, they really have the ability to muscle test you because just because something is good for you might not be good for me. So it's really important that you are using products that work for you. What other nutrients would you recommend that people be taking to help build their skin? Well, vitamin C internally is just is really important. You know, you want you want good healthy fruits and vegetables. You know, you want good nutritious products. So I actually won a contest for from directly from Alicia Silverstone, and I won her plant-based collagen builder. So I want to give them a shout out. It's from Garden of Life, and it's called My Kind Organics Organic Plant Collagen Builder. And so, listen, I don't know. I can't say like I built collagen because I don't know how to quantify that. Do you feel better? Do you notice that you feel better? Do you feel stronger? I mean, yeah, but I also lead a plant-based lifestyle and I do a lot of supplements. So it's like very hard to tell, but I know it has silica and it has bamboo extract and all of these things. So do you think that is something that helps with collagen building? I would have to really look at the product. Okay. But then sometimes I'll muscle test or use a pendulum because like, oh, well, Ooh, it's let's talk about that. Okay. So now I know I'm, JJ's not, a fan. I'm not really very woo woo. So it's some of that world is a little new for me, but we'll it's let so JJ fill that woo woo part. <laughs> so I took, I have like, I have a hyaluronic acid. I have several because you know, what's good for you is not necessarily good for me or the best. Yeah. And plus products are at different price points. So I have a couple people that are extremely sensitive and I'll go, it was really interesting. I have a holistic doctor came to me last week and I said, is this product good for her? And it said no. And you mean by doing... Taking a pendulum. Yep. And it, I don't understand it at all. Okay, JJ, can you explain this phenomenon? Oh, a pendulum? Pendulum and... Well, it's vibration and frequency, right? And so depending on... She shrugs her shoulders like it's so easy to understand. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean... And I, you know, because there's also muscle testing yourself, which we did yeah. at Releasing What Weighs You Down. Yeah. And not everybody can muscle test themselves because you get in the way. I get in my I own can. head. You get I in your own way. Yep. I need someone else to do it for me. So my holistic doctor, who is a functional medicine doctor, she does it. But I don't do it because I can't trust myself. Well, it's the same thing with the pendulum. It's the same thing that, you know, not everyone can do it for themselves. You just test it out and you see. But you can practice because getting out of your own head in order to have it done or doing it for somebody else is a great way to test because you're not directing it. Your subconscious isn't really trying to direct it. And for someone who doesn't know what this is, can you go back and tell everyone a little bit about what it is? So muscle testing and the pendulum really act on your own vibrational energetic field and whether or not something works well with your body or it doesn't. Naturally, our bodies pull away from things that don't work for us. So you're either going to test weak or or the pendulum is going to show you a no, whatever you decide a no and a yes is. And so when something is with your energy and it's positive and it strengthens you, your muscle... 
regardless of how you're testing it, whether it be your fingers or your arm, that gets stronger. It's like you can muscle test yourself on your name and have someone push your arm down and say, my name is, and then to say someone else's name. Yeah. And then you say your name and, and it's your real name. Like my name is Allie. And then you test stronger because your body recognizes that is true. That is true. Right. So, so you can do this with a cell phone too. So if you hold a cell phone close to your body, your muscles become weak. If you hold most people green juice next to your body, your muscles are strong because this is something that is fueling your body versus a cell phone, which is like not good for your body. And so it's the same with makeup or skincare products or any type of food or any type of supplement. You can do this. When I take Charlotte to the vet, she has a heart condition and a tumor. We muscle test every single supplement and medication that she is on every couple of weeks with her doctor to make sure that it is the exact right combination for her. Right. I definitely am a big fan of muscle testing all of your vitamins and most of the treatments that you do and learning how to do it yourself as well. And there are multiple ways to do it. There's, you don't have to do where you're, you know, your fingers, you can do it where you're holding it next to you and you're, you're leaning Yeah. and you're either leaning away from it, you're leaning, leaning towards, towards it. it. So there's uh-huh. a couple different ways to do muscle testing. There's, you could do it with just one finger or with just one hand if you're in the car. So we did that actually releasing what weighs you down or we'll probably do it again at the next big step. But, um, like I totally agree with Lori that just because something is a good product even if it's clean it doesn't mean your body is accepting of it right and sometimes you need to to do something first in order to be accepting of it if it's ever going to work for you and when i am going to test a product i will make sure that i'm clean so i'll say if i'm going to pick a pendulum i'll say okay give me a yes and give me a no so i know yes okay is this product good for me and then i do it is this product good for linda and then I'll test it. Is this product good for Kari? And it blows me away because I don't move my hand. And I know. <laughs> the like, non know person is like, Whoa. I know <laughs> the people like, is this hyaluronic good for her? Yeah. Or is this hyaluronic good for and her? And what dermatologist, doctor, or any type of esthetician, like any type of person that you're going to for advice, therapist, ask that. You know, it is very rare. So I feel like that is just, it just sets you apart. It's so important because I want, I'm very conscious about the money you spend. Skincare is not cheap. Right. No, but it's, <laughs> but, but, but it doesn't have to break the bank. Right. And it, again, it has to be something you care about. And that's unfortunately why I think some people do certain surgeries and things because they think it's just a one-time fee and then I'm done. Mm-hmm. But it isn't just a one-time thing and you don't know what the, what the side effects are going to be and you, you're not necessarily going to maintain it if you don't keep up the care. I think that your skincare is as important as your body care. And so do doing that and and making sure that you're making an investment. I mean, you spend money on what's important to you. Yep. And you're either going to spend it now or later when you're trying to do the da- like damage control yeah. and then you're going <laughs> crazy. Like, why not do it now and get a practice going so that way you don't have damage control? Yeah. And it's so much easier t- to take baby steps. Like, I had a client say to me, well, I thought if I just did it 12 times, that would be it. And I go, if you went to the gym 12 times and you never won again, right, what would done. happen to your body? <laughs> like, really? You ate eight salads and you think that's going to help that, for the really, rest of your for life? the rest of your yeah. life? Like, sometimes the logic, uh, women, we you know, we're smart, but right. sometimes not so much. Well, it goes... So we're hopeful. It sounds like the pill mentality or the surgery mentality. You think, like, I'll take this pill and then that's all. it's all good. I'll get the surgery and then I'm all good. But I, this I is thought, all... Right, yeah. I thought I'd go to sleep fat and wake up thin with liposuction. Never thought it would change the quality of my life for the rest of my life. I now have paralysis of the stomach muscles. I have to watch. And so, like, speaking of eating greens, my body doesn't just digest fiber or fat well. Mm. And the things that help you lose weight the most easily is fiber and fat. So what would you say to someone right now who was considering liposuction? Run away. Mm -hmm. There are people still dying on the table. And I have never had a client that comes to me with liposuction that's not lumpy and bumpy and unhappy with their body. And you know what? When you start to gain weight, because if you don't learn to change your habits, you will get fatter somewhere else. Right. Yeah. And it's not a permanent solution, right? You can gain the weight back. You gain the weight back and it goes someplace else. So they've taken those fat and it's gotten better. It's gotten better. Okay. But people are still dying. Mm. And you have a chronic condition. I have to watch everything I put in my mouth Mm -hmm. and know that I could be sick at any moment. Mm. Now, that being said, it was the biggest gift that ever for me. Yeah. It was I was a makeup artist for the industry. Mm-hmm. I was all about creating beauty. I could never ever have helped women the way I help them now. Right. So although it's tragic and and I suffer with it, 
I live with it. Yeah. And it's just part of what I have to live with. Well, but the gift yeah. that it gives to me every single day, when I look at a mirror, I show a client a mirror and her face lights up, that was worth everything I have to go through. Because I could have never, I struggled as a kid. Mm -hmm. My sister was gorgeous. She had these big eyes with brown eyes, with lashes and perfect teeth. And I had buck teeth. And she was 38 double D and I was 38 double A. And thank God I wasn't affected by that. But I just wanted my stomach to be smaller than my chest, mm -hmm. which, you know, oh well. You know, getting older, you get to accept it. But I was tortured by the my looks. I felt invisible most of my life. Yeah. So the way that I help women to give the gift of beauty to themselves feeds me every single day, just like I feed you. Mm -hmm. We need more lorries, although I'm yeah. glad you're here and don't go anywhere. So take, take really <laughs> good care of yourself. Us. right? <laughs> take really good care of yourself because we need you. Yes. And too many people that do this. You know, I was talking to somebody today. You know, when I was younger... You know, estheticians were and homemakers were people that couldn't do academics. Those mm -hmm. were the people that weren't smart. This was a career oh. I turned. Remember when we were home ec and, you know. I remember okay. home ec when I was like very young. Okay. Right. And yeah. facialists, you know. Be a secretary. Uh -huh. You know, for those people that couldn't do academia, mm -hmm. those were the people that went to. And so all they know when they went to beauty school is steaming and extractions. Well, extractions are going to spread bacteria. I don't like that either. Mm. I don't like steaming. I don't like half the things regular facialists do. Okay. But more and more now, they're much more educated. And so they've really changed. Mm -hmm. The whole but industry. The whole industry has changed. But it's really important that you go to somebody who really knows the science and knows what she's doing and knows the products and the integrity and how they react to your skin. Yep. It's so important because just somebody says they're a professional doesn't mean they are. Yep. Well, I'm now going to Lori only from now on. How about you, JJ? <laughs> well, I'm already there. I'll see her in two days. So, yep, I'm regular on the schedule. <laughs> All right. Well, you'll have to follow up with us and let us know how your latest treatment goes. I will. I will. <laughs> and more and more. I'm getting, in fact, I'm getting a new machine. I'm so excited. I know. Oh. She's like the machine. She's like, I'm, I'm the machine I'm, queen. I got a problem. I'm addicted to the latest, greatest machine. If it can work. I, no. So, I mean, I keep getting new things every time I'm uh. over there. I can't keep up, which is why I need to go buy them all. So I, at least I can have the things you've used on me that I've liked. And then when you get a new machine, we can just try it and then I can see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's Amazing. All, good. all right. And so it's important for me that I stay, you know, Current. on top of everything. Yeah. Because the industry changes. Well, thank you for doing that. All right. Well, thanks for co-hosting, JJ. Where can everyone find you online? JJFlizanes.com. JJFLIZANES.com. Everything is there. And uh, But we're really here talking about Lori today. So I definitely want to encourage everyone. If you Lori has all, bun all kinds of information on what you should and shouldn't do. The list of the ingredients that we talked about today is all at uh, LoriHeartGifts.com. And you can go and download some of that information so you have it in your back pocket and take it with you wherever you go. She also is giving away some initial consultations. So fill out the form and have a little consultation with Lori on Skype if you're not local and she can help you direct you and at least get you out of the products that aren't working for you or that are harmful to you if uh, if that's all that we can do right now. So definitely check out LoriHeartGifts.com. What a great testimonial. Now I don't even have to ask Lori where everyone can find her online. Well, you can still ask her. <laughs> you can still ask her. And it's worth a phone call. You know, no obligation. I'm not a hard salesperson. Yes. I really want you to be educated. In fact, and if, if anything, when I do events, I'm more about education. I always forget to do the sales part. Right. <laughs> You're just like, here's how I can help you. Here's all the great things you need to know. Yay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me well, here. Thanks for this being is here. such a passionate topic for me because I know women are dying and they're hurting themselves. If they're not dying on the outside, they're dying on the inside. Mm. And so I'm really here to end suffering that women have with their beauty and their aging. Oh, thank such you. Such a big thing for me because I don't have that anymore. Yeah. Thank you so Sometimes much. Sometimes I do, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> and let's give your tagline. <laughs> and ladies with makeup. If you look made up, we screwed up. Oh! And, and you only have one face. Take care of your face. It's the only one you have. Wait, why are you coaching her on this? I love this. Because I did a whole day of filming with her, so I know all of her taglines, and I, and they're good. You only have one face. You only yeah. Have, take care of it. Take care of your face. You only have one of them. Don't and then people leave me these messages because they're on my recordings. Well, I know in LA, they're two-faced. Some people are two-faced. <laughs> <laughs> but aside from that, I can lift your butt. I can lift your boobs. I can tighten your stomach. 
Oh. And you could just lie there. Okay. And I can melt your fat. So anything I can do will support what JJ's doing as well. Yeah. Cause and J- make it faster. So you do the exercise piece. She does the skin tightening. M- skin and- tightening piece. Yep. I need you both and in my life. And fat melting. Fat yes. melting. But safe. Thank you. Because there are things that are being promoted out there that are not safe. Do we need to know what they are? Can you give us a <laughs> Well, I'm not a big fan of cool sculpting. Okay, good. Because it causes a lot of inflammation. Again, the number one thing about aging is inflammation. Yes. So if, And chronic disease. And chronic disease. Yes. And so the other thing that's really important, and I know you want to end, grounding. Get out on the earth. Okay. I have these amazing grounding pads that while you sleep, not only it blocks all of the bad electrical frequencies, mm-hmm. Uh, because I am a frequency junkie, you yeah. can sleep on a pad or sit at your pad, but you can be in a room with no electricity, no lights, and you're still bombarded by dirty electricity. Yeah. And you came to my Rise and Bloom Mastermind. You both did. Thank you. And you brought the mat. Yeah. I brought the mat. And what was fascinating was, and you said this would happen, that the dogs, Charlotte and Jackson, were very attracted to the mat. And if you would get up, they were laying on it or they were laying with you. Because they're smarter than people. <laughs> <laughs> so they wanted that frequency. Yes, they love it. They're used to being on the ground. Yeah. And so by being on the ground, walking barefoot, you're picking up the frequencies of the earth that do heal your body. So why not heal your body while you're sleeping? Yeah, It will make you younger. I have a client in New York. Her skin stopped breaking out. Mm. Her boyfriend stopped snoring and her hair started growing back. Okay, do you sell these or where I can do. we buy these? Me. Okay, I'm like, I need one right now. But the now. ones I have are different than the ones on the internet. Right. Because the ones on the internet, you have to be barefoot or naked. These you can stick under your sheet. Great. I said to the inventor, a woman gets cold. She's putting on cashmere and pajamas. Uh-huh. She doesn't care about having her skin touch a grounding mat. Right. Give me ones that are 100% that can go under the sheet. Great. Perfect. Okay, so I'm buying one. Me send, too. Send me one, period. Yep. Done. <laughs> Done. Check. Thank you so All right. much. Thank so you, So important. Guys. And if you want any more tips, feel co- if you have a question about something being done, call me. I'll tell you the truth. More than you want to know, obviously. But <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, that's LoriHart.com. Thank you guys both so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. All right. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Lori. I certainly learned a lot from both of the lovely ladies we had on the show today. And here's just some bonus content for you, Food Heals Nation. I caught up with Jason in a beautiful kitchen, the Healing Kitchen. It's a series we're working on. More on that later. And we did 10 questions with Jason Robel. So it's kind of fun and silly. We had a good time and you'll get to hear more about the Good Mood Food course. Free for you at foodhealsnation.com slash goodmoodfood. Roll it, Roxy. And I'm rolling, so go. Welcome to 10 Things I Hate About J-Ro, hosted by Allison Malady from the Food Heals podcast. That's not what it's called. I thought that's what we were doing. No. Oh. We're going to start over. Okay. Here's what we're doing. We don't don't cut. Don't cut. Keep it rolling. We're doing 10 questions with Jason Robel, okay? What kind of... See, now, I haven't seen the questions ahead of time. Mm-hmm. You don't get to see the questions. But They're see, secret. But if, see, if, if people have heard me on the podcast, they already know that I tend to get kind of out there. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to shut up and let you ask. Okay. Okay, 10 questions. Let's do this. These are rapid fire. Rapid fire. Yes. Now, you can tell me a story if you have something, but I want the first thing that comes to your mind. God. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Go. Hit me. Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. Okay. Best part of your morning routine. Oh, boy. Um... I think definitely meditation. Absolutely. Like I, I crave and love the silent time that I get before I turn on the phone, before I turn on the laptop, before I start answering emails, about 20 to 30 minutes of meditation every morning. Absolutely. Okay. I love that. What is the one thing people may be surprised to know about you? I have my foreskin. I thought you were going to say something else. (laughs) I thought that was going to relate back to the morning routine, but that didn't happen. Anyway, that's my, I look like, uh, my penis kind of looks like a Muppet. Snuffleupagus. Snuffleupagus. I have a great visual right now. Thank you so much for that. Hi, Mom. (laughs) Okay. What is your healthy go-to, a juice or a smoothie? I'm a big fan of smoothies, and I, I like it because... Smoothies seem to satiate me more. I feel fuller on a mm-hmm. smoothie. If I'm doing a cleanse, though, I go hard in the paint with green juice. Yep. Hard in the paint. But most times, I'm a daily smoothie consumer. I'm the exact same. You couldn't have said it better. That would have been my answer, too. Mm-hmm. We would have had a different answer on number two. What would people be surprised to know about you? But... <laughs> 
That one we Allison matched. does not currently have foreskin. <laughs> I do not have foreskin. That I know of. No, not that I know of either. <laughs> that would be interesting to find out more about. Okay, what do you eat on a cheat day? Do you have cheat days? I'm okay. I'm a sugar fiend, mm -hmm. as we both we share about, sugar. Okay, mm -hmm. so I. Boy, cheat day, it's going to be a lot of chocolate um, or it's going to be donuts. Donuts? Yeah, yeah. Vegan so, donuts. So there's a place called Donut Friend in LA, oh, like hardcore on the donut tip. So good. It's, it's going to be it's gonna be chocolate and donuts and probably ice cream. Yeah. That is the trifecta of doom for me. Okay. Just to see a donuts <laughs> with a scoop of ice cream on top and then I break up a chocolate bar and then put the chunks of the chocolate on top of the ice cream that's on top of the donut. <sighs> oh, I got to go. She's taking a moment. Okay, okay, we're back. We're back. And, 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 and we're back. We're back. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Most romantic dish that you can cook? Oh, God. Um, see, now this depends on the person because I okay. have dated, currently dating many um, people? people. How many people? Yes, How many people at once? <laughs> Do they know about each other? These aren't wow. all the questions, by the way. <laughs> These are new. Okay, so let's reel it back. It depends if they're a sweet or savory person. Because okay. if they're if they're a sweet freak, I'm definitely gonna do like chocolate avocado pudding, Ooh. or I'm gonna do salted caramel waffles. Mm -hmm. If they're a savory person, I'm probably gonna do maybe a roasted cauliflower steak Ooh. with like a zucchini cheese on top, nice. um, or maybe I'll go some like like roasted portobello. It de it depends. It depends. I need to know first if they're a sweet freak or a savory freak, and then I go from there. Okay, so that's... Because everyone's got their freakiness differently. You can't true. assume one person's freaky deakiness is going to be the same as another person's freaky deakiness, which is what makes the world go round. And how freaky deaky are you? Scale of 1 to 10. With food or in the bedroom? Both. I mean, it's kind of... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean sometimes those things... Cry. I'm, I'm definitely... Yeah, I'm definitely a freak. I'm very <laughs> open-minded and uh, with food and with, with sex. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely... So you're a 10? Yeah. Nine. I, I, 9 .5. Well, I mean, we can... With, like... It's probably a nine, because there's things I just won't do. Sorry. What won't you do? <laughs> <laughs> These aren't on the questions, sorry. I, I just mean, keep going. <laughs> I don't, like, I'm not into, like, being pooped on. Like, if we're going to go there. Oh, my God. Is that a thing? Yeah, oh, yeah, of course it's a thing. That is not a thing. No, it's a thing. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I had Who a would like that? I had a friend. I, You're the, the videographers are nodding, everyone. <laughs> I had a friend named Fred uh, back in Detroit this where I live. This is a fake story. No, it's friend not. Named no, Fred named no, Fred. Okay. Not. No, it's not. Okay. And his girlfriend, okay, would tell us stories about her ex, would 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 beg her to uh, to poop on me. I gotta go. So I don't I don't get into all that. <clears throat> I like to push the boundaries, Allie, but we're not, we're not, I know. Okay, no. so we're not poop, at a poop, 10. Poop stays out of the bedroom. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, next. We're going to go clean now. Are we? I hope so, because there's, there's not much further we can go than that. Oh, no, we could go dirtier, but I'll skip that question. Name a vegan celebrity you can text right now who's in your phone. Um, boy, uh, Stevie Wonder's in my phone. <gasps> Whoa, that's a cool one. Woody Harrelson's in my phone. Who will text you back? Um, I feel like Woody would text me back. I feel like Stevie Woody Wonder. would too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stevie might take a little time. Yeah, well, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Okay, next. Um, who would you have dinner with, living or dead? <sighs> That's so tough. I only get to choose one person. For, in the interest of time. Yeah. Freddie Mercury. Cool. Hundred percent. Okay. What would you ask him? Well, I, I would I would want to know about his obsession with cats. I would want to know about uh, what it's like to be on stage in front of uh, uh, seventy thousand people at Wembley Stadium. I want to know what he does to unwind after mm -hmm. tour. I'd want to sing with him. I'd want to go out to karaoke. I, like it would have to be dinner at a karaoke bar with Freddie yes. Mercury. That is the thing. It would be insane. That would be epic. insane. Okay, I see that for you. This is coming true, Jason. What is your number one mood boosting food? <sighs> I would have to say my number one mood boosting food. Um, God, that's so hard to pick one. Good God. Um, I am a big fan of 
um, matcha green tea. Mm. I'll tell you why. Okay. So matcha green tea is uh, full of antioxidants and flavonoids. It also has uh, good healthy amounts of caffeine that don't give you the jitters, but it also has a very specific amino acid called L-theanine. L-theanine mm -hmm. is great for turning on the brain, improving cognition, improving memory. So if I had to have one thing to like really give me that boost, it's definitely matcha. I'm a matcha fiend. I love matcha. I'm a connoisseur. I go to all the places around town just to like sample their matcha. So yeah, matcha is the number one mood boosting ingredient in my arsenal for sure. All right. And matcha is delicious. So that's definitely a good one. Now tell everyone listening or watching right now about the Good Mood Food Project. Yes. Okay. So I did this brand new online course with Commune. Uh, it's the founder of Wanderlust, the Wanderlust mm -hmm. Festival's Jeff. He started this new company all about creating empowering education in a variety of uh, modalities. So he actually invited me to come on and do Good Mood Foods because we're seeing so many people struggling with depression and mood disorders, anxiety, stress, mm -hmm. suicidal yeah. thinking. So and true. if we can change our diet and change the way that we meditate and change the way that we handle our relationships, we can start improving our brain health, our neurotransmitter function, healing our guts. Mm -hmm. Because we do know that the more we heal our gut, the better brain function we have. Yes. So, it, the, they call the gut the second brain. Exactly. Yeah. So this is all about boosting your mood, improving relationships, getting mindfulness on point, uh, eating healthier food that has a positive effect on not only your brain, but also your gut. So it's a 10-day course. It's completely free. Awesome. And you can sign up. Um, there's a link. I know you'll be sharing your link to that. And if you guys just want to click on that link, you can sign up for free until October 10th. The course starts on October 8th, but people can sign up until the 10th. I put it at foodhealsnation.com slash goodmood food. Yay. Thanks, Yay. Allie. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to be scared that they know so much about me now, do you think? No, they're going to no, love it. Love they love it. you even okay. more okay. now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving us an insight into, into your life. It didn't get as dirty as it could have. I'm actually impressed. It could have gone, yeah, well, yeah. It's, I, I reeled back. I yeah. pulled the reeled, reins on that one, back. okay? Goodbye. Goodbye. Hand this man a microphone. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know. <laughs> or a whisk. See you guys. <laughs> These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat in this dress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately.